So some of us have said we've had bad dinner parties, but I don't think you've had one quite like this. Let's talk about barbarians. Hey everyone, this is David Stark from Watcher Pass, and I'm going to talk to you about Barbarians, which is a dark comedy thriller that is coming to theaters, VOD, and digital today, May, April 1st, 2022. It is not a joke. It is out today. It is a film that has essentially two distinct parts, and they are both very different, but they, they feed together in very interesting ways. So my hot take is I think you should rent this. It's a good movie. It's a, a, a well-done indie thriller that has two distinct parts that kind of meld together pretty well. I really liked a lot about it, but the story had a few confusing parts, and some of the characters, I didn't love some of their actions. But overall, I think it's really good. I definitely think you should check it out. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the film, a few things I liked, a few things I didn't like, and then go into the ending. So as you can imagine, there will be spoilers. If you don't want to know what happens in the film, you can stick around until the ending discussion. I'm going to try to keep it spoiler-free until then, but just be warned when the ending discussion happens, you're going to find out what happens in the film. In Barbarians, you have four friends who get together for a lovely meal in this house that uh, one of them is developing. It's, it's developing this like test house. You're going to make like a community out in the wilderness. It is a beautiful house. It is very modern. It's filled with art. It's filled with really cool things. And they're having a celebratory dinner for one of their birthdays. Uh, and so what starts off is what could be kind of a lovely uh, evening starts with a few ominous signs and then as the evening progresses tension from the dinner and then also tension from external forces cause this to become a very eventful night so things i liked about this movie the first is the setting like this is a beautiful beautiful setting this house is gorgeous it's out in the countryside it'll really make you wish that you were out you know out in the wilderness there are a few unsettling things that happen there's some issues with some wildlife but overall it is just a beautiful setting in very different ways. On the one hand, it's a great place for this dinner party, but then when things get a little bit more eventful later on, it becomes a an interesting place as people explore both the house and the kind of confines around it. The second thing I really liked is the dark style. And it's kind of tough to really put my finger on, but it is, the movie itself is a very dark film. Like it's not like dark, like in terms of the subject matter, although there is a little bit of a dark subject matter, but the film has kind of like an overcast type look. Uh, especially outside the indoor scenes even when they're enjoyable like the dinner party it does feel like there's a lot of kind of darker tones to the uh to the movie like either the clothes or the the house the house itself it feels like the overall this film has a you know a, a darker overall feel that it does help kind of put you on edge even in some of the you know not tense scenes there's always kind of an air of something is going to happen in this film it kind of contributes perfectly to you know, both of the main acts. There are three main acts in this film. I kind of see it as kind of two, two distinct scenarios that happen. Uh, and that dark tone fits perfectly for both of them, which is interesting because they are very different scenarios, but the dark tone helps both. The third thing I like is the music. There is some very beautiful classical music that plays uh, during pivotal scenes. That is perfect. It's kind of normal in a horror, in a thriller movie to have that happen. You'll have something bad happen and you'll have just this blaring baroque music and barbarians does that perfectly it has it, it does help to enhance those scenes it makes them feel epic and it makes them feel kind of meaningful which i i always appreciate and the fourth thing i liked are the i guess the serious dark comedy i mean this film is not like funny per se but it is biting and interesting and a lot of the things that it explores i really like like there are some scenes that are serious and kind of humorous because of how serious they are it's not going to make you like laugh out loud except there's a few scenes that will but overall you'll appreciate kind of the care that went into a lot of these scenes a lot of these scenarios and a lot of the comment like it it comments on modern life it comments on kind of you know public persona versus private persona it comments on like friendship versus business there are a lot of things here that are very clever and very interesting and if you kind of appreciate them it, you'll, you'll get a lot out of this the last thing i liked about this film are the effects look i'm a person that loves practical horror effects this film had it i don't think there was any cg if there was it was not very noticeable uh even you know some of the wildlife that you encounter in this film is practically done it, it is definitely a, a kind of i don't i don't think they actually trapped the fox maybe they did i'm not sure but the you know the the effect itself was done with prosthetics was done with some sort of practical effects which is good like if, if it would have been cg it would have looked really off it would have looked very very uh noticeable but here because all the effects are practical, you can just kind of live in this strange scenario that you're in. So things I didn't love, and this might be just partly because of me, uh, some of the story was a little bit confusing on my first watch. Now, my second watch, I don't know if I paid more attention or because I already kind of knew the characters was easier to follow, but some of the little nuances in their interactions and things that happened, I didn't catch the first time. 
I caught it the second time. So maybe it was just me not focusing as much when I first watched it. But this might be a film that you have to watch twice to really get all the little nuances. I think that might be by design because there is some information that's kind of dropped very subtly at the start. Um, so I think that that is partly by design and partly just kind of the way that the story progresses that you might have to watch it a couple of times to really get a good sense. So the second thing I didn't love is there are some poor decisions by the guests. Now look, the second part of this film is a thriller horror film that thrusts these individuals into a scenario where they are not normally ready for. So you're going to get a few bad decisions, but it seems like there are a couple very bad decisions late on that they should have known better uh, at that time. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit in the ending, but it was just like, I was kind of tearing my hair out on a couple, well, the hair I have left, I was tearing the hair I had left out on some of those decisions. So going into the ending of this film. So the first part of the film is this dinner party between these friends. And it, I, I really liked this part because it is, it is so interesting to hear the kind of their conversations and see there is definitely some, uh, not power struggles, but definitely some like male bravado here. There are some kind of like biting backhanded compliments there's some you know you can tell that they are actually friends but then also occasionally they'll like retreat back to kind of being adversaries even though they're all sharing this lovely dinner for adam's birthday so during the dinner party there is a big reveal that one of the friends slept with another one it, it happened once and that kind of like descends the, the dinner party into chaos like there was some tension before involving businesses and financials and things like that but that kind of is the, the straw that breaks the camel's back. And during that time, there's a there's a ringing at the door. So Eva goes to get the door while Adam and Lucas uh, fight it out. And at the door are three masked strangers. They're kind of in like painter suits and they're wearing uh, like animal skull masks. And so they, they capture Eva and proceed to kind of terrorize this group of friends, uh, destroying parts of the house in this very elaborate way. I really loved this scene specifically. Um, the The intruder who destroys everything does it in like a very artful dance like way the director actually said that he was a dancer and it definitely feels like he is doing a destruction dance while also destroying like art and destroying uh statues and things like that it is a very interesting piece i was, I was like i was holding my breath as i was watching because i'm like how did they film this like this must have been like a one take and that must have been very tough to do i mean obviously they they probably cut it a couple times but like the destruction itself uh, that, that, it was all very permanent so so after they kind of terrorize everyone, destroy a lot of the art, uh, you know, zip tie everyone, uh, two, two of the uh, masked men kind of go out to discuss something, leaving one there. And during this time, Lucas is kind of freaking out. He is the developer friend. He's rolling around on the ground. Uh, and, and the, you know, the person who's left is not sure what's happening. He's kind of recording it on his phone, thinking it's funny. And eventually, Lucas slips the, uh, the zip tie cuffs off, off of him and kind of gets up and breaks the cuffs off he is like exceedingly strong You're like i don't really understand why but hey you know what maybe it is the adrenaline and then he attacks the lone intruder left uh guarding them and stabs him with uh some scissors and so that person is out but here instead of like freeing his friends which i think he was still hyped up on adrenaline that's what you think uh he looks for a weapon and one of the other intruders comes back in and he sees what's happening. Lucas uh, has the weapon. He pulls the trigger. Nothing happens. There's no bullets in there. So that means Lucas runs and he's pursued by one of the intruders. So now we have Lucas being pursued by one of the, the intruders and Eva, Chloe, and Adam all kind of still being held hostage by the one, the other remaining invader. Uh, eventually, Eva, you know, kind of frees herself enough to tackle what the, the wolf invader and hold him in place while chloe and, and adam free themselves and so they finally free themselves they tie up the other invader and they unmask him and it actually ends up being one of the helpers in the house so this house was owned by this family it was a father and three kids and the father died of a heart attack during some of these business negotiations it seems like there was a pretty tense business deal that was happening and it caused the father to die of a heart attack and so the three kids or pretty resentful, they still kind of stayed on to help the farm, to help the house and kind of help keep it up. And apparently they planned this. And so the, you know, the, the unmask one, it's one of the kids, they kind of realize that these are all the kids of uh, Lucas's business partner. We also find out that Lucas is kind of freaking out because Adam drugged him because Adam was a little embarrassed earlier when Lucas uh, was being antagonistic towards him. So he ended up drugging him. So that's why Lucas is freaking out. That's why he's feeling a little weird. That's why he's feeling a little off. 
again, just just a normal dinner party, right? So Adam then takes the gun and goes out to kind of try to find Lucas because you know he's drugged. He's out there in the middle, in the night. Not a good situation. The girls stay there with the other invader and kind of like have him tied up and, and are holding him hostage. So Adam gets out there. Lucas and the other invader are fighting and they kind of get into a, a skirmish on the ground and the other invader kills Lucas. And Adam is sitting there with the gun. Like, come on, dude, just do something. But he doesn't do anything. He, I guess he freezes up. Uh, and so that invader kills Lucas. And then the invader comes up to him and Adam has the gun pointed at him. And I'm, I'm like, dude, just do something. And he doesn't do anything. He's, he like says, basically it's loaded, like stop. And that invader just kind of like walks up to him and grabs the gun. So that was the decision. I was like that. I didn't love that because I know Adam's character is supposed to be a little bit meek. Uh, he's supposed to kind of want great things, but he can't really ever do it. But I feel like that is a situation where he would have hopefully at least stepped up. Maybe if he shot and like missed, that would be one thing, but he just didn't even pull the trigger. So anyways, now Adam is captured by one invader and the girls have the other invader and they kind of have it right. They are, they have the invader on the ground. They are like, you know, poking him with a knife to, to you know, show how angry they are. Like they have him down. But Adam just couldn't do it with the other one. So the other invader walks up with Adam at gunpoint and basically demands they release his brother. So the girls comply, they release his brother. And now essentially when they felt like they had the upper hand in both scenarios, now the two invaders have the upper hand on them. At this point, I think they realize that they have to fight because A, Lucas is already dead. And B, they know who these people are. So they are not going to be able to get out alive. So um the adam says like hey we'll sign the house over to you if you just let us leave he's trying to like get them to go so that i think the girls can escape or that they can maybe split them up um but the invaders have them all come into the house uh one of the invaders takes eva upstairs to sign the paperwork to sign the house over and adam and chloe are left with the other invader so adam makes a run for it and that causes the other invader who who doesn't want to shoot uh and you want to think he shoots the, the ceiling to, to warn his brother that one of the people is escaping. That causes Eva to jump into action and like deck one of them with a paperweight. And that causes, so, so now Eva is fighting one of them upstairs. Chloe is left with the one with the gun downstairs and Adam is running. So after Eva hit him with a paperweight, Adam appears and like tackles that brother who's like, you know, staggered from the paperweight out the window. They go out the window and they both fall and hit the concrete. Now, Chloe, on the other hand, is left with the, the brother that we kind of knew. He was the one that we saw earlier. He is the one that I think couldn't shoot Adam, so he shot the ceiling. Uh, Chloe stabs him, but in this scuffle, he accidentally, I think, shoots Chloe. I don't think he meant to. He didn't seem like someone that was going to hurt anyone, but he accidentally shoots Chloe, and so Chloe is now dead. So, so Eva has this nail gun that they were using to keep them hostage, so she kind of gets that last brother who has a like a knife sticking out of him still to get out get out of the house she like holds him hostage out to the house and goes and checks on adam and it, no, it turns out adam is still alive he survived that fall so he staggers over he takes the nail gun from eva uh the other the last remaining brother is kind of like lying against the fountain outside kind of staggered and hurt but you know still alive and adam just basically executes him he takes the nail gun to his head and pulls the trigger and i was like all right adam like this is not the time for you to do that. It would have been better earlier, but this just feels wrong. And I think that's the whole point. I think Adam is just kind of always wrong throughout this movie. I liked his character and, and Ewan Rion did a fantastic job. And actually all the acting is really great. If that was another thing I would have said I love, the acting is all very good. Like all the actors do a really good job in these characters. Um, but at this point I was like, Adam, he's like essentially incapacitated. It's over. You don't kill him. That, you know, that, that seems a little off. But anyway, so Adam takes him out. So now the only people left are Eva and Adam. And you know what? I guess they get the house scot free, right? Like that's they're the only ones left. It's their house now. The camera pans out to look over this beautiful estate. And it, I really love this effect because kind of as it pulls out, you get to see the beautiful estate again. And all the carnage just kind of like melts away, right? A lot of the carnage happened inside. The stuff outside kind of becomes a little bit harder to see. And you just get this beautiful view of this estate that uh, this lovely dinner party occurred in. And that's Barbarians. Like I said, it has a lot of really good things about it. Like you can see in my list, there's a lot of things I loved. There's a few things I didn't love about it. So I'd say it's a rental. You know, it's kind of a, a low watch, high rental. If you watch this, it's going to be an interesting experience. Uh, but you can watch it in many ways. It's on theaters, VOD, and digital. Now, April 1st, 2022. And also another interesting thing, the film is exactly 90 minutes. And I was 
curious about that. So I asked the director uh, and you can see his response in my interview with the director that's also up on this site. And thanks so much for watching. If you like this review, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content comes straight to you. And please check out my other content. I have an interview with Charlie Dorfman, the writer and director, and Catalina Sandina Moreno, the star of this film. That's up on the website. I also have other interviews, reviews, unboxing videos, and recommendations. Thank you. So I, I duct tape myself for this uh, review and now I can't get it off. So enjoy. Thank you.